In this lecture, we're going to continue our discussion of the Laplace transform. Specifically, we're going to talk about taking the Laplace transform of integrals. So before we can get started with this section, we want to introduce a concept called the convolution. So by definition, if f and g are piecewise continuous on the interval from 0 to infinity, then a special product called the convolution of f and g, denoted f star g, is defined as follows. The convolution of f and g, so f star g, is equal to the integral from 0 to t of f of tau times g of t minus tau with respect to tau. Now the convolution theorem states that if f and g are piecewise continuous on the interval from 0 to infinity, then the Laplace transform of the convolution of f with g, so f star g, will be the Laplace transform of f times the Laplace transform of g, or big F of s times big G of s. So let's look at an example where we're going to apply the convolution theorem. So this example says find the Laplace transform of e to the 2t star sine of t. So the Laplace transform of the convolution of e to the 2t and sine of t. So our convolution theorem says that if I have a convolution like this, I can split it up and it'll be the product of the Laplace transform of the first term times the Laplace transform of the second term. So that'll be the Laplace transform of e to the 2t times the Laplace transform of the sine of t. We can take both of those Laplace transforms, so that's going to give us 1 over s minus 2 and 1 over s squared plus 1, and then we can combine them into a single product to get 1 over s minus 2 times s squared plus 1. And so that'll be the Laplace transform that we're looking for. Here's the second example. So this time we want to find the Laplace transform of the integral from 0 to t of the sine of tau times the cosine of t minus tau with respect to tau. Now, of course, we could take this integral and evaluate it and then take the Laplace transform of our results. But if we want to use the convolution theorem, we want to denote uh, how to rewrite this as a convolution. So we want to identify the function of tau and the function of t minus tau. So the function of tau, f of tau, is going to be the sine of tau, and so that means that the f of t function would be the sine of t. And if we look at t minus tau, so our function of t minus tau, which we denote g typically, g of t minus tau will be the cosine of t minus tau, and so that means our general function, g of t, will be the cosine of t. So this integral, the integral from 0 to t of the sine of tau times the cosine of t minus tau, can be rewritten as sine of t star cosine of t. So this is the convolution of the sine of t with the cosine of t. Applying our convolution theorem, this means we could take the Laplace transform of the sine of t and multiply it by the Laplace transform of the cosine of t. That's going to give us 1 over s squared plus 1 times s over s squared plus 1. And if we put that together, that's going to give us s over s squared plus 1 quantity squared. So that'll be the Laplace transform that we're looking for here. For a third example, we want to find the Laplace transform of the integral from 0 to t of tau times the sine of tau with respect to tau. So again, if we're trying to write this as a convolution, we want to identify the function of tau, which we denote f, and the function of t minus tau, which we denote g. So all that I see inside this integral are taus, so the whole function here will be our f. f of tau would be tau times the sine of tau, which means that f of t would be t times the sine of t. Now remember, whenever you see a term by itself, it's, implicit, it's implied that that is multiplied by 1. So I could always write this as 1 times tau sine of tau. And so we'll let 1 be our g function. So g of t minus tau is going to be 1, which means that g of t would also be 1. So we could think of this integral as the convolution of 1 with t times the sine of t. If we want to take the Laplace transform of that, we'll apply the convolution theorem. 
So that'll be the Laplace transform of 1 times the Laplace transform of t times the sine of t. The Laplace transform of 1 was going to be 1 over s. And so the Laplace transform of t times the sine of t, we're going to need to use the derivative of a transform theorem that we discussed previously. Our t has a power of 1 to it, so that'll be negative 1 times the first derivative with respect to s of the Laplace transform of the sine of t. So we have 1 over s times the first derivative of 1 over s squared plus 1. We'll take that derivative. So if our function is 1 over s squared plus 1, then the first derivative will be negative 2s over s squared plus 1 quantity squared. So we have negative 1 over s times a negative 2s over s squared plus 1 quantity squared. The s's will cancel out, as will the negative signs. So we'll be left with 2 over s squared plus 1 quantity squared. And so that'll be the Laplace transform we're looking for. So based on the result from our previous example, we can take the transform of any integral using that approach. We can assume that the integral is a convolution of 1 with whatever function is on the inside. And so that'll lead us to the formula, the Laplace transform, of the integral from 0 to t of some function f of tau with respect to tau will be the Laplace transform of that function f divided by s. So the 1 over s comes from the Laplace transform of 1, and then big F of s would come from the Laplace transform of the integrand, or what's inside the integral. Right? We can also take the inverse of this. So that says that the inverse Laplace transform of big F of s divided by s will be equal to the integral from 0 to t of f of tau with respect to tau. So let's look at an example that would use that inverse transform. We want to take the inverse Laplace of 1 over s times s minus a quantity squared. We can take the 1 over s, so that first s, we can pull that out. So this will be the inverse Laplace of 1 over s times 1 over s minus a quantity squared. And using the theorem from today, this 1 over s is going to lead us to the integral from 0 to t of the inverse Laplace of 1 over s minus a quantity squared with respect to tau. Now the s minus a, that's going to be a translation, so we could rewrite this as the integral from 0 to t of the inverse Laplace of 1 over s squared, as s is translated to s minus a with respect to tau. And then we can take those inverse Laplace transforms. Now remember, since we're inside the integral, we're going to use taus instead of t's. So 1 over s squared is going to give us tau, and the translation from s to s minus a will give us e to the a tau. So now we just need to evaluate this integral. So the integral from 0 to t of tau times e to the a tau with respect to tau. We're going to need to use integration by parts. So I'm going to let my u be tau and my dv be e to the a tau. We take the first derivative, so that's going to be 1, and we integrate the v to get e to the a tau over a. We go again, we get 0 for u, and e to the a tau over a squared to be v, and that completes our table. We alternate between addition and subtraction, and we multiply diagonally. So our first term is going to be tau times e to the a tau over a, and then we'll subtract e to the a tau over a squared. And we need to evaluate this at our limits of integration from 0 to t. So we'll do that next. We'll plug in our limits of integration. So we plug in t, and then we subtract plugging in 0. So we get t e to the at over a minus e to the at over a squared minus 0 minus 1 over a squared. And so if we simplify this, the 0 will go away, the negative and the negative. So the negative here and the negative here, those will become positive, and we'll get t e to the at minus e to the at over a squared plus 1 over a squared. 
So being able to take the Laplace transform, an inverse Laplace transform dealing with integrals, is going to allow us to solve integral equations using the Laplace transform. So we're going to look at integral equations or integral differential equations. So those are equations that have integrals or equations that have integrals and derivatives. And we're going to apply the same approach that we've used to solve differential equations to solve these integral equations. So our example is f of t plus 2 times the integral from 0 to t of f of tau times the cosine of t minus tau with respect to tau is equal to 4e to the negative t plus the sine of t. So to solve our equation, we're going to take the Laplace transform of all of our terms. So the Laplace transform of f of t plus 2 times the Laplace of that integral from 0 to t of f of tau times the cosine of t minus tau with respect to tau will be the Laplace transform of e4 e to the negative t plus the sine of t. The Laplace transform of f of t will be big F of s. We can rewrite the integral using the convolution notation. So that is going to be f star cosine. And then using the convolution theorem, it's going to give us 2 times the Laplace transform of f of t times the Laplace transform of the cosine of t. And on the other side, we'll have 4 over s plus 1 plus 1 over s squared plus 1. Now, if we evaluate the Laplace transforms in that convolution, we'll wind up with big F of s plus 2 times big F of s times s over s squared plus 1 equals 4 over s plus 1 plus 1 over s squared plus 1. All right. So we're going to combine things together. We're going to combine the left-hand side by factoring out a big F of s. So big F of s times 1 plus 2s over s squared plus 1 equals 4 over s plus 1 plus 1 over s squared plus 1. We'll combine the left-hand side into a single quotient by finding a common denominator. So we can rewrite 1 as s squared plus 1 over s squared plus 1. And then when we put those together, we'll get big F of s equals s squared plus 2s plus 1 over s squared plus 1. We'll multiply both sides by the reciprocal of that to get big F by itself. So we're going to multiply by s squared plus 1 over s squared plus 2s plus 1, which we could factor to be s plus 1 squared. And that's going to give us big F of s equals 4 times s squared plus 1 over s plus 1 cubed plus 1 over s plus 1 squared. All right, we'll distribute the 4 to get 4s squared plus 4 over s plus 1 cubed. And we'll multiply the top and the bottom of the first, or excuse me, of the second term by s plus 1 to create a common denominator. And when we put that all together, we're going to get 4s squared plus s plus 5 over s plus 1 cubed. So big F of s is 4s squared plus s plus 5 over s plus 1 cubed. Now that we have big F of s all by itself, we need to take the inverse Laplace transform to solve the problem. And in order to take this inverse Laplace transform, we're going to break it up using partial fractions. So 4s squared plus s plus 5 over s plus 1 cubed, we can break up to be a over s plus 1 plus b over s plus 1 squared plus c over s plus 1 cubed. We'll multiply both sides of the equation by our common denominator, s plus 1 cubed. And so that's going to give us 4s squared plus s plus 5 equals a times s plus 1 squared plus b times s plus 1 plus c. We'll distribute and expand to get rid of our parentheses. So 4s squared plus s plus 5 equals as squared plus 2as plus a plus bs plus b plus c. And then we'll equate our coefficients so that we can solve for a, b, and c. So if we start with our s squared coefficients, we have 4 on the left and a on the right. So we get 4 equals a. If we look at our s coefficients, we have 1 on the left. We have 2a plus b on the right. 
so 1 equals 2a plus b. And if we look at our constant coefficients, we have a 5 on the left, we have a, b, and c on the right, so 5 equals a plus b plus c. This gives us a system of three equations with three unknowns, so we can solve for a, b, and c. Our first equation tells us that a is equal to 4. So we can plug that into the second equation, so 1 equals 2 times 4 plus b, so 1 equals 8 plus b, that means b has to be a negative 7. Now that we know that a is 4 and b is negative 7, we can plug both of those results into the third equation. So 5 equals 4 minus 7 plus c. 4 minus 7 is a negative 3, so negative 3 plus c. We'll add the 3 to the other side, so that gives us c is equal to 8. Now that we know all three values for a, b, and c, we can rewrite our problem using the partial fraction decomposition. So big F of s will be 4 over s plus 1 plus a negative 7 over s plus 1 squared plus 8 over s plus 1 cubed. We'll take the inverse Laplace transform of both sides. So the inverse Laplace of big F of s equals the inverse Laplace of 4 over s plus 1 plus the inverse Laplace of negative 7 over s plus 1 squared plus the inverse Laplace of 8 over s plus 1 cubed. We're going to rewrite each of those with translation. So this is 4 times the inverse Laplace of 1 over s translated from s to s plus 1, minus 7 times the inverse Laplace of 1 over s squared translated from s to s plus 1, plus we're going to take 4 out so that we can leave the 2 in the numerator that we'll need to use our Laplace transform. So 4 times the inverse Laplace of 2 over s cubed, translated from s to s plus 1. We'll take the inverse Laplace of each of those, so this is going to give us f of t equals 4. 1 over s gives us 1, and the translation gives us e to the minus t. Minus 7, 1 over s squared will give us a t, and the translation gives us e to the minus t. Plus 4. 2 over s cubed will give us t squared, and the translation gives us e to the minus t. So the solution to our integral equation will be f of t equals 4 e to the minus t minus 7t e to the minus t plus 4t squared e to the minus t.